JFT just fair and direct. Good morning everyone and welcome to JFD's daily market review for January the, the 21st. I am Harald Ambos Pissuros, Head of Research here at JFD and I will talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events and how they could affect the markets. But before we start, let's read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds uh, to read the rest and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, the US dollar traded higher against all but uh, two of the other major currencies on Thursday and during the Asian session Friday. It gained the most versus uh, AUD, NZD and GBP in that order, while it underperformed against the Japanese yen. The greenback was found virtually unchanged against the Swiss franc. Now, the strengthening of the yen, the franc and the US dollar, combined with the weakening of the risk-linked Aussie and Kiwi, suggests that markets uh, turned to risk off at some point yesterday. Indeed, turning our gaze to the, to the equity world, we see that uh, European indices traded in the green, but Wall Street extended its uh, latest tumble with a negative appetite rolling into the Asian session uh, today. Now, European investors may have taken the torch from the Asian ones who yesterday, uh, during the Asian morning yesterday, they they were encouraged to add to their risk exposures after China cut its mortgage reference rate for the first time in nearly two years. Now, remarks by ECB President Lagarde may have also helped uh, European equities. She said that inflation in the Eurozone will decrease gradually over the course of this year, adding that the ECB does not need to act as boldly as, um, as, uh, as the Fed. This may have convinced more market participants that uh, the ECB may not be willing to act uh, this year and that's why European shares perform better than their US and Asian counterparts. Now flying to the US, the story is uh, the same as yesterday and the day before. Wall Street saw another session of uh, massive selling with the tech-heavy Nasdaq falling the most, perhaps as US Treasury yields continue to rise. This means that ahead of next, uh, of next week's uh, Fed gathering, investors are adding uh, to their bets over a faster tightening process by the Fed. Remember that most participants anticipate the first post-pandemic hike to be delivered in March, with some of them holding the view that the committee should start with a double lift-off in order to restore, to restore its uh, credibility. Now, as for our view, we see the case for risk aversion to continue next week as well, ahead of Wednesday, when the Fed will announce its uh, decision. Now, although the Fed is not expected to proceed with any action at this meeting, we will closely monitor the outcome for clues and hints on whether and how policymakers are thinking to act in March. We do expect policymakers to sound hoggish and highlight the need for higher rates, but bearing in mind the elevated bets on that front by market participants, we see ample room for, disappo for disappointment. Anything suggesting that they may not proceed as fast as the market currently anticipates could uh, result in a rebound in equities and a pullback in the US dollar and other safe havens. Now, even if the outlook uh, matches expectations, we could still experience a sell the rumor by the fact market reaction. In order for equities to fall notably lower and the dollar to accelerate north in the aftermath of uh, the Fed uh, decision, Powell and his colleagues may need to appear even more aggressive than the current pricing suggests, a case we see as unlikely. According to the Fed Fund Futures, market participants are nearly fully pricing in four hikes by the end of this year while the latest dot plot uh, revealed that the committee uh, sees only three. 
Now, as uh, for today's events, during the early European session, we already got the UK retail sales for December with both the headline and core uh, rates uh, disappointing uh, largely as uh, they dropped to minus 3.7 and minus 3.6 percent respectively. This resulted in a small uh, slide in the pound, but bearing in mind the acceleration in inflation on Wednesday, we don't believe that it could force market participants to remove their bets over a rate hike by the Bank of England at, the, at its upcoming gathering. The Canadian data are for November. The headline rate is forecast to have declined, but the core one to have held steady. Again, we don't believe that this number could, that th these numbers could prove game changers for the Bank of Canada. After all, they are for November and we already have the CPIs for December in hand, which uh, similarly to the UK ones accelerated. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. For those who are interested in learning about the main events of the week much earlier, you can subscribe to the weekly Market Outlook webinar, which I'm hosting every Monday at 8 o'clock AM GMT. You can find the link in the description below. So, goodbye, have a great day, a greater weekend, and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again next week. JFT, just fair and direct.